Hey, hey, welcome back. So I'm going to do it. I told you guys I was going to test out the best thing or the best way to decorate our wood signs. And that's what we're doing today. I put it off for two weeks or one week. I don't really remember which, but we're going to try. I know I told you guys vinyl, uh, HTV, which is the iron on and sublimation. And we're going to try those three, but I added decoupage to the mix. Especially after last week's video, I really enjoyed the decoupage. That was really cool. Um, we're going to do the best we can right now. I'm looking out my window and it is raining, but I do have not an awning, but I have a little bit of a, a roof, very, very little bit of a roof over my window. So I should be able to open my window. Hopefully it doesn't get loud. Hopefully it doesn't start storming. So we're going to do this to the best. Of our abilities weather permitting is what i'm talking about so if you're ready to get started if you're ready to find out which way is the best way to decorate our wood join me at my crafting table i'll go over everything that you're going to need and then we'll get started For today's project, we're going to need our heat press, poly acrylic, mod pod, paint brushes, butcher paper, our wood rounds, and for the sake of time, I've already prepped them by painting them white. Your designs, and if you're going to do decoupage, your napkins. Now that we have everything that we need, let's get crafting. First thing we need to do in this project is go ahead and get what's going to take the longest out of the way first. And what's going to take the longest is applying our Mod Podge and our Polycrylic. So, because those have to dry completely first. So let's go ahead and do the Polycrylic first. And I am just going to apply one thin layer. I shook my Polycrylic up um, prior to opening it. Y'all notice I'm still using the same newspaper. It worked. One coat and you want to set this to the side and let it dry 100%. Next, we're going to do our Mod Podge. Shake it up really good. A new brush. And you're also going to give it one coat. The polycrylic is for the sublimation. And the Mod Podge is for the decoupage. Remember to smooth out your brush strokes. Just like with the polycrylic, you want to set this to the side and let it dry. While we are waiting on these to dry, let's do our HTV and see how it turns out. Remember, we've done HTV on wood before. Let's see if it does any better using the auto heat press. For the iron on, I'm going to go by what the website, what Cricut's website says, and for wood using the auto press. And although this is not the Cricut auto press, it's still an auto press. I'm setting it for 305 at 30 seconds. One thing that the Cricut site also says is to make sure you preheat for five seconds. Because it's painted and it's wood, I want to protect my machine. So I am going to go ahead and slide you over some so you can see. I'm going to go ahead and put the butcher paper down so that it protects. I got the auto press on. When it goes five seconds, then I'll open it back up. Take, ooh, that's been warm. Slide it over so you guys can see a little bit better. 
Gotta ignore the mess on my floor. You know how that goes. Now we're going to place our image, place our image on our board. And place our paper back over. Look. It also says to wait until it's completely cooled before you peel. And I think we kind of learned that one on the last one that we did, that it just, it held better when we waited until it was completely cool. Or I'm not going to try and peel it while it's so hot, but y'all see what I'm putting on. As y'all know, if I grab this without my gloves, it's going to hurt because it's going to be hot. So leaving it on there, you know what, we're going to use the heat mats. And we're going to place our sign on there and let it cool. While we're waiting on the HTV to cool, the Mod Podge to dry, and the polycrylic to dry, we're going to now do the vinyl. Now, hmm, for those of you who have been on with me in this channel for quite some time know that I absolutely despise transfer paper. I do. I, I, I just, I don't like it because I always struggle with it. If I didn't struggle with it, I probably would be okay with it. But I always struggle. I always had the hardest time with it. So, fingers crossed that this time is going to be different. I'm, I'm not holding my breath, but grab a corner, peel it back, put that there. I'm going to attempt to go ahead and lay this down. Cut that a little bit too big, didn't I? Use my scraper. And go over everything. And let's see. Let's start from up here. A little pencil marks or the metal part of the pencil, so to speak. See what I mean? There we go. Sometimes I just kind of got to give it a little helping hand. Let's peel it up off of there. I'm going to flip it. Let's see if we can get that back off of there because, you know, the machine's trying to turn off on me. I need to stay on for a little while. All right. That wasn't so bad. That wasn't too bad. Let's see. I want the hello kind of down here. All right. Use the scraper. Kind of put it in place, hopefully. That's the concept anyway. Grab a corner, pull it down, and very slowly. see your vinyl can come up and you don't want that if you pull it too fast you can rip your vinyl so 
the yellow was the only one that wanted to stay. Not too bad. Look there. I guess I just got to talk bad about the vinyl paper before I, or the transfer tape before I use it. And then it works out pretty good. Now, as far as the vinyl goes, that's it. You can. Especially if, you're, if your sign is going to be outdoors or on your door that is out in the open in the weather, put Mod Podge on it to seal it. And that will help keep your vinyl in place. And if you're going to have your sign outdoors, use the dishwasher safe uh, Mod Podge because that will protect it from the weather. You When you put it on, it dries in no time, but it's not cured. In other words, it's not okay for outside, outside, you know, display for 28 days. So keep that in mind. You want to make your signs well in advance if you're going to use the vinyl. As far as time-wise goes, I'm going to say the vinyl is the best. But let's see how the rest of them turn out. This feels cool to the touch, so let's slowly peel it. Remember, just like with the um, regular vinyl, your uh, HTV, you want to peel slowly because you can definitely rip your, your paper or your image if it is not adhered. That actually turned out really well. It looks like one of my snowflake, snowflake pieces kind of turned a little bit, but that's okay. I didn't remember it being white, but I guess it is because it doesn't feel like it turned turned. It doesn't look like it turned turned either. But now, same with the vinyl. If you're going to use this outdoors, if it's going to be on your door that is in the weather, Mod Podge dishwasher safe so that it seals it and protects it. Again, keep in mind 24 or 28 days cure time. So for this sign, I can go ahead and cure it and or put Mod Podge on it. By the time it's time for me to hang this, it will have cured. The colors come out good. And just in case you're wondering which iron-on I used, I used the pattern iron-on. And it's pretty much, to me, it kind of went on just as easily as the everyday iron-on. Although the weeding was not as easy as the everyday iron-on. So keep that in mind, too. Our Mod Podge, Mod Podge is dry. I don't feel any tackiness to it. So let's add our napkin. Luckily with these napkins, once they fold or out, you unfold them. <laughs> once you unfold them, it covers the whole thing. So y'all know the drill. You have to separate it. And if you have the eyes of a 20-year-old, this is not that hard. But when you have the eyes of an almost 50-year-old, that's a whole different ballgame. I did not grab both layers either. I just grabbed the one. I saw someone one time use tape to peel it back. Get us a little piece of tape. Fold that so I don't have to hunt for it again. Now, all she did was put a tape on it and pick it up. Let's see if I can do it without ripping it.
tear it apart. I might have had uh, I might have had it when I did it a second ago. Maybe it don't have more than I could have swore there was another layer. Maybe I'm wrong. Shh, don't tell nobody. But it's it's pretty transparent, so I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that that is the only layer. All right, just like before, you don't want a whole lot of excess. So I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming, but not a lot. I need my big scissors. We can't be messing around with little baby scissors. Basically, I'm taking off the corners. Now, as far as using a heat press, the auto heat press, I'm really not sure. Exact on a time. I tried researching it. And all I've, all I've seen so far is when the iron on using the mini press. So we are going to leave it at 305. And we're going to do it for 10 seconds at a time. And we'll go from there. I'm going to use butcher paper if for no other reason than, but to at least protect my machine. Place that on there. I'm going to have that pretty well centered and then I'm going to place this one on top give it that added protection I hope just like that I don't know if you guys caught that or not I put butcher paper underneath napkin on top And put your paper on top of there. We're going to let it run for the 10 seconds. And then we're going to test it and see what it does. Y'all ignore my floor. Remember, just like before, gently lift the sides. There was one side over here that still... There we go. It was sticking to my paper. There was one side over here that wasn't stuck all the way. My board though upward. It's all right though. I'm going to do five seconds. So I'm going to watch the time. That way when it hits five, I can stop it. Don't get your fingers caught up on the machine. Perfect. And that was all it took. That was all it took. It's smooth. It's adhered. My board is warp is kind of bowed a little bit, but that's okay because this is going to be the centerpiece of a, um, a wreath. So that's not really an issue. So now we have about five, 10 minutes left to wait on the polycrylic. While we're waiting on everything, let's go ahead and we'll use our uh, sanding block this time. And you're just going to go over the edges to break it apart.
And just like that, looks like it's part of the wood. Just like before, if you're planning on using this where it would be in the weather, make sure that you seal it first. Otherwise, it's not going to last very long. Three down, one to go. Polycrylic is completely dry. It's not tacky at all. It doesn't feel damp or nothing. Now, y'all know I had to throw some Halloween in there. Okay, so instead of cutting it completely out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this. I saw someone do this. This is not my own invention by any means. But taking a Q-tip and some water. And by the way, you're going to need water and either a sponge or a brush or something that you can get the paper off the uh, wood sign once it is done sublimating. But they took and they wet around so that they could rip it. basically to make it rip easier and i'm gonna be honest with you i really don't see a difference except for right there i lied i see a difference now you're guiding it is what you're doing i so get that now because i was heading straight for my design i don't know if y'all saw that or not oh yes look at that Tear it off. It's supposed to give it a more natural appearance on the um on the board. I've never really noticed a difference, but or noticed anything on mine when I didn't do this. But I thought I'd give this a try and see, you know, what the hoopla was. Just make sure you don't get in too much of a hurry that you wet your actual design. That over to the side and that to the side. I mean, I could definitely print out another one, but. To me, that's a waste of paper. Okay. On the edges, I don't see a difference. So, uh oh, sorry guys, I don't mean to bump the camera. There. We'll be able to tell if there's a difference because one side is cut and the rest of them are not. Move that out of the way. All right, now the butcher paper I've been using all day. There's nothing wrong with it. I've not sublimated on it, so we're going to reuse it for this. But once we're done, once we've sublimated with it, it has to go in the garbage because you can't use it anymore. No Let's find out where we're going to place our image. As long as it's on here, it doesn't matter which way you turn it because it's round. Anywhere you turn it is going to be the right way. Down there. I don't know why I feel like I got to check it. All right. Yes. Put that there. I feel like, for whatever reason, is that the right side? All right. Tape. Make sure, just for in case purposes, that it is not on the image. 
Now let's hope that it does not stick to the board because you know we've had we've had pretty good luck so far on this tutorial. Let's hope nothing happens that anything comes off of it. All right, there we go. All right, now. According to the great Jennifer Maker, and if you guys do not know who she is, oh, you better look her up because she is fabulous. According to her, when you're doing polyacrylic, you set your machine at 375 for 90 seconds. So that's what I have it set on. Because when I, y'all know I've done the laminate, but I've not done the polyacrylic. So this is be my first. We want to see how it turns out. But. Everything I looked up said something different. I trust Jennifer Maker, so I'm going by what uh, her temperature says, or what she says you should set you should set your temperature at, and what you should set your time at. So, image on your board. Don't forget to put the butcher paper on top because that would be very very bad. Slide it in. It's on auto, so it automatically goes down. Let me try to adjust. And once this is done, we'll see what it looks like. I will say that the polyacrylic method, whew, stinks, is not pleasant. All right. That out. Looking for something I can grab. Just everybody I saw peeled it immediately. Oh no! Some of the paint did come off of it. Oh, you guys did not even see it. I'm so sorry. Let me move you a little closer. Okay. Some of the paint did come off in. A couple of spots I think and that off I think that was due to the heat um that can be touched up that's not really an issue I can get a little paintbrush and add more paint to that so that's not an issue I am going to take my little brush See if I can't get some of the paper off. Hey, look, I have napkins. <laughs> that little brush is just not doing the trick. So I'm going to go get a sponge. Okay, I got my sponge. I'm going to dip it in water. And I'm going to wring it out because I don't want that much water on there. And to be honest, the only reason I didn't go with the laminate way of doing it is just simply because I didn't have a laminate piece big enough. I feel like some of the paint as some of the images actually coming off. Because that is. See that? Ah, it's sliding on me. Okay, everybody made this look so easy. I have to say, so far, I am not a fan of this sublimation on the wood using polyacrylic. Using the laminate, love it. Absolutely love it. Using the polyacrylic, mmm. 
I am just not a fan. But I will say, I could still use that. But I may have to go on Amazon and do a little shopping. See if I can't. Because this is just, I feel like this is just pulling the, the image off. So I'm going to stop right there and not do any more. I can touch up the white and that is still usable. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if I would use it or not. Just to be honest with you, if I was making a wreath to sell to a customer, no, I would not use this. If I was making a wreath just for me or to put in my classroom, Yes, I would use this because this could be like, oh, it's rays of sunshine coming through. I don't know, you know, but like I can touch up the white. That's not an issue. That part does not bother me at all. I don't like the streaks and I don't like when I'm trying to clean it that it's come up. And this could be because I painted the board before, but I had seen everybody else. I had seen a lot of other people paint their boards too, so I don't know. I don't know. What I need to do is shop and find some laminate pouches that are bigger, that are not just the 8 by 11 and a half. And that way I could use it for my boards as well because I really like the way the laminate looks. And if you've not seen that video, I will place it in a card. I think it's in this corner. Don't quote me. It's in one of these corners. You'll see it pop up. Anyway, all of them are done. Let's look at all of them together. Okay, so comparison. Which one was the easiest, absolute, quickest, easiest one to do? Vinyl. And if you look at it, it does look good. It, it really does. Like, I can't complain. I wanted enough room, so if I wanted to add a bow to the wreath and the tail of it kind of linger in that I could or if I wanted to add something else I could but I will be sealing this with dishwasher safe Mod Podge and using this in a wreath that I'm going to be making hopefully very soon. So definitely quickest possible way to do it would be this one would be the vinyl. As far as the easiest way to do it I would have to say all three way or all four ways was fairly easy. Um, just slapping it on, just ironing it on. That took, um, what was it for the iron on 30 seconds? I think it was. So, I mean, that really did not take long. These two were actually not too bad. They probably about the same because on this one, we had to prep it as far as getting it on the the transfer tape and then putting it on here this one we had to just put it on here and put it in the heat press for 30 seconds so really they were both quick but I really think this one was the fastest both very easy this one very easy take some time same as the sublimation one they both take time simply because of the drying time the Mod Podge and the polyacrylic which one will I not do again the sublimation one at least not on wood and not not like this not like this I won't say not on wood but not like this if I can find some laminate sheets that would cover a 10 a 10 inch circle then that's what I'm gonna use I also love doing the decoupage and you guys saw it put it in the um, heat press for what was it 15 seconds total and you're good make sure if you're going to put it out in the weather any of them that you're going to put in the weather make sure that you use your mod podge the dishwasher safe mod podge i hope you enjoyed the tutorial i hope it's inspired you to go out and create your own wooden sign i don't know that i would do it with the polyacrylic um if you have any tips or tricks or maybe i shouldn't have used the paint maybe you know something that i don't share in the comments below let me know hook a girl up and let me know what i'm doing that i can do better um outside of that 
laminating is the only way I'm going to be doing the uh, sublimation on wood unless I get these sublimation rounds. But then to me, when the sublimation rounds, it doesn't really look like wood. It looks like the MDF, in my opinion, anyway. But that's okay because we still have other options like the vinyl, uh, the deco uh decoupage and i noticed yes guys that in my intro and now in my outro that i still have my fall signs um i just haven't done anything with them they will probably be here for a little bit longer until i do something with them i'm back in 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 school at work the kids are not there by the time you guys watch this video the kids will be there but for right now they're not so I don't have all day like I did over the summer. I'm already missing that. I'm not lying, but that's okay. Anyway, this will not be the end of this one. I will probably have something on here like welcome or blessed or thankful or something like that across it and probably across the bottom of it maybe we'll see we'll see when i go to put the wreath together how that looks um i also have we also do the iron on i will probably do a lot more of the iron on especially seeing how i can use on the thin ones and as you can see this is pretty thin so with these the iron on it went on really really nicely i feel like smooth no problems i like that um not the foil iron on this was the pattern iron on and the emery iron on those seem to work the best so those would be what i would use and those would be what i suggest using if you come across one that you find that goes on really easy it doesn't give you any issues comment below let me know i'll give it a try and see how it works out for me as well remember we have several holidays coming up there's a lot to make still uh, in upcoming videos, I still have the tumblers or the cups for the kids to make. Still have not had a chance to do the designs, but that is coming up soon, hopefully, because I know they're ready to have their cups because they're going to be personalized too. So until next time, remember, keep crafting your best life.